Hi, welcome to this Spring Boot course. Uh, so, uh, this code is, course is basically divided into the multiple modules and the idea is to uh, start from the very basics of the Spring Boots to give you an overview what Spring Boot is, what kind of a benefits or one kind of, uh, one kind of, what kind of uh, advantages it brings into the table. And then we start building our uh, applications. We start building our knowledge, uh, basic knowledge of the Spring Boot, uh, Spring Boot framework. And then we start uh, building out the application on top of it. So gradually we will be moving from the basics of the Spring Boot uh, to the some of the core features of the Spring Boot and then eventually going to the some of the advanced uh, features of the Spring Boot. For example, how you can create your uh, custom uh, starters uh, what are the ways you can monitor your application onto the production environment? Uh, when you are going to deploy your application onto the production environment, what are the different things which you should be taking care uh, while uh, creating the package uh, uh, for your Spring Boot applications? Right. So let's ha have a quick look onto the different modules and what kind of uh, uh, things or what kind of uh, topics we are going to cover into uh, those different modules. So our first module is going to be a very basic uh, Spring Boot module where uh, the idea is uh, to at least uh, start uh, creating those building blocks which are going to be used uh, throughout the uh, throughout this course. So we will be starting with the Spring Boot introduction, what Spring Boot is, uh, why we need actually a Spring Boot, right? And then we will be doing a, a, a comparisons, not a comparison in itself, but uh, just to make sure that everyone uh, is clear that what Spring is, what Spring Boot is, how they uh, complement each other, right? It's nothing like a Spring Boot is in a replacement for the Spring. So how they, they work together to give you uh, a, a set of tools uh, which you can use to help in your day-to-day -day, uh, development, right? Uh, then we will be talking about the different uh, Spring Boot features. Uh, uh, as next part of it since we are going to develop a, a application based upon the Spring Boot we will be looking into the uh, how we are going to set up our Spring uh, Boot development environment which includes setting up your favorite uh, IDE and then how you uh, what are the different steps to create those uh, uh, project right then we will be starting our uh, journey with a very simple Spring Boot application. It's not going to be very complicated, it's not a fancy application, just maybe a simple Spring Boot application which is going to print uh, Hello World, the typical Hello World uh, string, right? Uh, we will be running that application to see uh, the different things. And then uh, in the in the last of this module, the first module, we will I will going to give you an overview of the application which we are going to build based upon the spring boot uh, so um, it's not like i'm going to give you um, the topics overview how you can do it but we will be building our uh, us application a full-fledged uh, deployable deployment application uh, based upon the different concept which we are going to learn throughout this uh, course the Spring, uh, our module two will cover uh, some of the basics of the Spring Boot, uh, which are really, really uh, critical. Uh, we need to understand those basics in order to use uh, Spring Boot to its full uh, capacity. So what we are going to understand is the, sp the typical Spring Boot uh, uh, structure. When you create a Spring Boot application, what is the typical structure of the Spring Boot application? Uh, what is the main entry point for your Spring Boot application? What are the auto configuration of Spring Boot? We are not going to get into the details in this module. Uh, we will be creating a simple REST controller. Uh, we'll, we'll get a basic understanding of the starters, what kind of a features they bring into the picture, uh, why should be using the starters, and what is the, uh, what is the benefits for using the starters. Uh, so as I said, we will be creating a shopping cart application. Uh, which is a full-fledged shopping cart application. You will going to create your products. You're going to add your product to the shopping cart. Even you can go with the checkout. So we will be building that application uh, uh, throughout this course, uh, starting from designing our data models, then building our uh, our JP repository on top of it, building our services, building our controllers, and all those kind of things, right? Uh, since we are going to develop uh, this shopping cart application and the the endpoint sorry the the, the exp we are going to expose it through the rest 
so i will be covering the rest basics I, this is not going to be the rest course so we will just cover briefly touch base some of the core concept of the rest uh, uh, sorry rest architecture uh, just to make sure that we understand those basics while we are building our uh, our endpoints the module 3 uh, will be talking about more of the configurations uh, like um, the project or property file there is a property file in the spring boot which is uh, uh, is known as the, the main configuration file you can control the behavior of your application using this property file so we are going to give a deeper look into the property file uh, what are the different ways I can configure my property files logging is of course is a, is a critical part of any of the uh, production grade application so we will be learning out the different ways to configure your uh, logging throughout your applications how you I can control what are the different uh, uh, logging APIs provided by the spring boots and let's say if you want to use a log4j or some other uh, logging library how we can do that right uh, we will also going to cover out the spring boot profiles uh, so this is not a spring boot feature it's a spring feature in itself where you can create a different profiles and based upon whether you are in a dev environment you want to have a certain set of uh, properties for the dev environment uh, if you are into a staging environment probably you may have a different set of uh, properties for example you may have a different endpoints communication endpoints you may have a different database configurations so all those kind of uh, things we can uh, we can handle or we can control using the spring profile and spring boot provides a uh, uh, some kind of uh, advanced functionalities around it where you can create a different application or property files based with a certain naming convention and the spring boot is intelligent enough to pick those up uh, based upon the active profile for you so we will be covering that into the module 3 so module 4 is going to be the JPA uh, the reason why we picked this uh, uh, because our uh, our shopping cart application is going to use the JPA to create all those database structure, the entities, the relations in order to build our application. Uh, so that's the reason why we included Spring, uh, uh, like the JPA uh, capabilities within the Spring Boot. What kind of a built-in feature it provides uh, uh, to you? How we can use those one? So we are going to we are going to cover the basic understanding of the introduction of the JPS, how we can enable the Spring Data JPA support uh, in our application. We will be creating a couple of repositories uh, for our sample applications. We are also going to create the different entities, which is nothing but a, uh, a mapping or a, a reflection of your database structure, not entirely a one-to-one -one, uh, mapping, but it's based upon how you are putting up the relations. So we will be talking about all those things. We are going to create, as I said, different uh, repositories for basic CURD operations. Um, you are going to create maybe a product. You are going to update a product. You are going to create a shopping cart. You are going to delete your shopping cart. So we are going to uh, create all sort of those uh, uh, operations using our uh, Spring Boot JPA capabilities. And the module five is basically going to focus on to the web development since we are going to build our rest based uh, shopping cart application so we are going to uh, we are going to discuss a little bit about the spring boot mbc auto configurations what what sort of a features uh, the mbc auto configuration provides to you uh, how spring boot is different when it comes to handling the static content uh, typically uh, if you look into the full fledged web application i'm i'm assuming that you have some background uh, uh, knowledge or at least uh, the the understanding of the web structure so the static contents uh, onto the web application is a little bit different but when it comes to the spring boot uh, they have a certain conventions uh, so if you if you follow those conventions uh, you don't need those all boilerplate codes uh, to handle the static content so we are going to cover that one uh, since we are going to talk about the rest applications uh, we definitely uh, want to touch base onto the content negotiation how the uh, rest client and the rest api works uh, to understand uh, to set up a communication with each other okay i am expecting a json uh, and i'm going to return you a json i'm just taking example so that is known as a content negotiation how you negotiate uh, your content uh, on that one 
we are going to talk about the HTTP message converters which are uh, crucial. Uh, we are going to look into the different HTTP message converters and if you want to introduce your own custom uh, converters, uh, how we can do it with the Spring Boot. We are also going to uh, talk about the error handling or the exception handling capabilities built on, on top of Spring Boot. So you already have the built-in capabilities onto the Spring MBC and the Spring. A Spring Boot provides a one more la uh, one another layer of the abstraction on top of it. Uh, so we are definitely going to uh, uh, talk about that one as well. The module six is going to uh, we are going to focus mainly about the packaging and running your Spring Boot application onto the production environment or maybe your staging environment. You can call it as a pre-prod environment. Uh, so we are going to cover the different aspect when you are packaging your application. Uh, what are the different things or what are the main points which you should be taking care of? Um, so we are going to cover, uh, let's say if you want to deploy your application onto the cloud, uh, what should, what are the different uh, or kind of a checklist which you should be following uh, uh, while creating a packaging. If you want to deploy a Spring Boot application on your, uh, on your uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, what are the things you should be taking care of? Um, Let's say if you want to run your Spring Boot application as a service, uh, if you have, if you already have some background working onto the web application, you can run Tomcat as a service. Uh, you can run the other, for example, you can run MySQL as a service. In a similar fashion, you can run My, uh, Spring Boot as a service. So we will be talking about that one. We are also going to talk about uh, if you don't if. If you're not working onto the uh, Spring Boot web application, right? This is a myth where mo mostly when, when you're starting with the Spring Boot, you think, okay, hey, Spring Boot is something which is going to uh, support or going to uh, augment onto the web application. That is not the case. You can build a web as well as a known web application uh, with the Spring Boot application, uh, with the Spring Boot, right? Um, you based upon the certain configurations it, it it behaves like a web application but if you take out those char characteristics from the application you can uh, use that as a known web application so we are going to cover that well that as well into our module 6 so module 7 is going to talk about the production gr uh, greedy features uh, deploying application uh, creating a feature onto the application is a one thing right what once the application is deployed onto your production environment, you want to monitor those applications, how the application is uh, uh, is behaving, how the application is reacting to the different uh, parameters or to the different uh, characteristics of the production environment, right? Whether uh, how the memory use is going on, if the CPU is working fine for your application or not, what is the caching level? If you are using a caching in an application, what is the caching level, right? How the session um, is behaving itself, right? How are, what are the number of sessions uh, active, uh, currently active on your application, right? So you want to uh, monitor all those kind of things, right? So we are going to cover uh, one of the interesting feature of the Spring Boot, uh, which is a Spring Boot actuator. So we are going to talk about it, what kind of uh, features uh, it brings into your uh, on your tool set. Uh, we will be talking about the the steps which are uh, required to activate the Spring uh, actuator in your uh, in your application. Uh, we will be uh, going to discuss about the different endpoints uh, that is available out of the box in your once you activate your Spring Boot actuator uh, and what kind of information it provides you when you uh, start uh, querying those endpoints. Right, so we will be going to talk about those one and uh, we are also going to talk about the grafana uh, grafana if you have if you haven't heard about it just uh, google for it it's a it's a it's a dashboard which and grafana has the capabilities to read the data from the different uh, sources and then it can give you a graphical representation uh, uh, for 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 your uh, for your monitoring so we are going to talk about the Spring Boot actuator and Grafana and how, uh, like, if you want to integrate it, what are the different steps you may need it. We may run it. We may uh, cover a, a small demo to show you how our application. When we build our application, we create the actuator. We ac activate the actuator and how the data is looking into the Grafana. Sometime. Uh, 
there is always a possibility that all you 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 think about some endpoint and which is not available into the api right so we will be talking about how you can create the custom endpoints uh, uh, in your actuator the last thing which we are going to cover in this module is the spring boot admin uh, our module 8 is uh, going to cover some of the advanced topics uh, uh, we will be most of these topics will be covered into the other modules but uh, we will uh, we are going to uh, cover it a little bit in more details because uh, they they really need uh, uh, a certain amount of uh, information or say they certainly need a certain uh, level of attention right so we will be going to talk about the failure analyzer in the spring boot uh, we are going to get deep inside how the auto configuration works what are the uh, configuration which is provided by the spring boot how does they work when you start your application what happens how it actually they understand when you create your own configuration and you want to override those configuration so we want to get we, we want to going to get a deep dive into the auto configurations right we are going to create a custom starters uh, we will talk about why do you need a, what are, why do you need to create a custom starters right uh, the auto configure custom auto configuration and starters works uh, side by side uh, probably when you're creating a starters most probably you're going to create an auto configuration so we are going to cover these two advanced topics we are also going to cover about the uh, the caching configurations provided by the spring boot and uh, what are the different options to control those uh, configurations the last uh, are, uh, the last chapter on this module is going to be the bomb.xml uh, throughout this module we are going to look into the pom.xml what are the different configurations or uh, dependencies we need to add into the pom.xml but this uh, specific topic is is going or basically it's going to dive uh, deeper into this uh, file we want to get we want to give you an understanding internally how it works um, how spring spring boot handles the different dependencies for you how the auto configuration works so we are going to get a deep dive into the pom.xml structures and how spring is spring boot internally using this structure uh, so in the module 9 we are going to cover what the some of the spring uh, boot security features uh, this is not going to be uh, we are not going to cover the entire spring security features but this is going to give you a brief idea if you want to enable the Spring Security in your uh, uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, what are the different ways you can enable that Spring Security feature? We are also going to cover a little bit about the basic configurations. Those are needed into the uh, to enable the Spring uh, at least to enable the basic Spring Security in your Spring Boot applications. But as I said, this is not going to cover the entire uh, Spring Security architecture or the configurations. We're going to uh, touch base on O2, uh, the different uh, like the, the steps required to activate the O2 modules, uh, what are the different configurations which you can use uh, and the setup which is needed uh, to enable the O2 um, feature in your Spring Boot application. So module 10 is going to be more or less as a recap. Uh, we are going to look into the different concepts which we learned throughout this course. We are also going to look into the application which we have built uh, throughout this module and at the uh, end of this uh, uh, this uh, module we are going to deploy and run that application to see uh, um, how the overall things are working fine. So that's that's an overall uh, overall view of this uh, how we have structured this Spring Boot, uh, Spring Boot um, course. I hope uh, this will going to help you out. So without let's uh, enough of the I, I think the talk let's get into the first module of this uh, course